Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be back on the radio again today. We certainly do appreciate the good Lord allowing us to be able to come to you by means of radio. This is the Barrett Baptist Church broadcast, and we certainly are privileged to be the pastor there, Brother Tim Crotz. We thank you so much for tuning in to our radio broadcast uh, at every opportunity that you have. That's a blessing to us. We sure do hope that we can be a blessing uh, to you today as well. I'll give you just a little bit of information about our church. Our church is located at 100 Born Again Lane in Cana, Virginia. That's Baratrill Baptist Church, 100 Born Again Lane, Cana, Virginia, 24317. You could send us some mail there you'd like, or you can visit us at that address. That is our physical address, as well as our mailing address. You can visit our church website, BaratrillBaptistChurch.com. The website contains uh, sermons that are preached my, by myself, our assistant pastor, other folks at the church, or other preachers at the church, I should say. And uh, you're free to listen to those, download those from our sermons page if you'd like. Also, you can contact us directly from our website. Uh, there's a contact button there. You can email us directly. I'll give you my personal phone number. You can call or text us at this number, 336-755-7015. That number again, 336-755-7015. If you call and I don't answer the phone, please leave a detailed message. We'll return your call as soon as possible. Well, we've been in Psalm 23 for a number of weeks now, and we've been in Psalm 23 and verse number 4 for several weeks as well. And Lord willing, today we will finish verse number 4 of Psalm 23. We'll read the entirety of the psalm together. We'll go to the Lord in prayer, ask God to help us today, and then we'll begin with the very last statement in verse number 4, talking about the comfort of the Lord. So the psalm says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, would you please help us today? Lord, would you forgive us of all of our sin, all of our fault, our failures, Lord, our iniquities, our transgressions. Please help us, Lord, have a clear heart, a clear mind, a pure heart and a pure mind. Help us to rightly divide the word of truth. Help us to preach it with power, compassion, conviction, and use it, Lord, to speak to the hearts of your folks today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we've been talking about for the last little while, thy rod and thy staff, they shall comfort me. We finished up last week. We didn't actually finish, but I'm not going to go back and finish. But we was talking about the staff, and we talked about the staff speaking of unity, uh, the staff speaking of guidance. The staff also speaks of assurance. Now, we didn't uh, in labor on that part. We didn't even We didn't even cover that point at all. But we're not going to go back to that today. We're going to go right on to the next part of the psalm, and that is thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We're going to talk about comfort. And so we've talked about the shepherd's company, thou art with me. We talked about the shepherd's club, talking about the rod. Talked about the shepherd's crook, the staff. And now we want to talk about the shepherd's comfort. We could say we want to talk about the results of the shepherd's comfort. Now, speaking of comfort, we mentioned a week or so ago that a comfort is not removal from trouble. Comfort is not removal from problems or, or, or tribulation or anything like that. Comfort is being strengthened during those things. Now, I'll give you the Webster's definition, the 1828 Webster's definition for comfort is this, to strengthen the mind when depressed or enfeebled. It means to console. It means to give new vigor to the spirits. It means to cheer or relieve from depression or trouble. And so once again, that definition for comfort in the 1828 Webster's Dictionary, it means to strengthen the mind when depressed or enfeebled. It means to console. It means to give new vigor to the spirits, to cheer or relieve from depression or trouble. And so we want to talk about the results 
of the shepherds comfort. What does the Bible have to say on the subject of comfort? Now, when we think of comfort, we automatically think comfort of being relief from something. And it certainly could be relief from pain. It could certainly be relief from stress or uh, relief from uh, uneasiness of body. That is true. It is all of those things, but it is also much more than that as well. First of all, let's talk about the promise of the comfort, the promise of comfort. Jesus said in the gospel of John, John chapter 14, verse number 18, Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. Now in the chapter preceding that in John chapter 13, Jesus is addressing his disciples and he's addressing them as children. In fact, in John 13 in verse 33, The Bible says, Jesus said, little children, yet a little while and I am with you. Ye shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, whether I go, ye cannot come. So now say I, or I say to you. So here Jesus was, he was explaining, he was talking to his disciples. He was consoling, comforting his disciples. And he says that he would show them the kindness of, of a parent. He refers to them as little children, explaining to them that he will be a, as a parent unto them. And though he is going away, though he is going to leave them, he is not going to leave them comfortless. He is going to provide for their future comfort or their future welfare, if you will. Though Jesus was going to die, this is before the cross, he's headed to the cross, he would live again. He's he's letting them know that uh, he is going to die, but he will live again. And though absent from the body, he would be present with them by the Spirit. Though he was going away to heaven after his resurrection from the dead, he would return yet again to them. In fact, he told them in John 14, And verse number three, he said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Now, what is he speaking of when he said, I will come again? Well, there are many folks, many refer to to our Lord's coming to his disciples after his resurrection. That's what they are speaking of. Well, they think that Jesus is speaking of here. Many refer to his invisible coming into the hearts and lives of believers uh, as his coming again. Many refer to his coming by the outpouring of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. Now listen, all three of these views, I would say they probably have some some element of, of truth in them, but I don't think that's what he's talking about at all. I think to be correct about what he's meaning is we have to look at his words. He said, I will come again. Now, the true sense of this expression is this. It, it appears that he's speaking of the second personal coming of himself, amen, at the end of the world in a broad sweeping promise intending for all believers in every age and not for the apostles alone. Jesus is saying, I will not stay in heaven forever. I will one day come back for you, amen. And so we have the promise of of his coming. It is like the message when the angels uh, brought to the disciples or the two angels brought to the disciples there in Acts chapter one, when they were standing and they were watching the Lord Jesus Christ ascend back into heaven. And in verse number 10, the Bible says, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, you men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, amen, I like that. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. It is like the last promise, which winds up the book of Revelation, where the Bible says in Revelation twenty-two twenty, he which testifies these things shall Surely 
I come quickly, even so come Lord Jesus. Listen, Jesus returned personally to those disciples after the resurrection. He did that. He appeared in the upper room. Listen, friend, one day, one day, thank God, he's going to personally return for you and I and for every individual that have placed their faith and their trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ for the salvation of their souls. Listen, friend, this is comfort for the believer. There is comfort in knowing that our Lord Jesus Christ promised he would not leave us comfortless. He would send us a comforter, and then he promised that he himself would come back. Listen, I know you know these verses well, but I want to look at them today. I want to read them today. First Thessalonians chapter 4. The Bible says in verse 13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Verse 15 says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I like verse 18 as well. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. What a great comfort it is to know that one day, dear friend, whether we're in the grave and our bodies have has gone into corruption, I'm glad that thank God it's going to be raised immortal, incorruptible, and if we are alive and remain, we're going to be called up together with the Lord in the air. What a blessing that is. And so we see the promise of comfort. Then there's the provision of comfort. We're thankful for the provision of comfort now. I'm thankful for the comforter that lives in my heart. I'm thankful for the comfort that one of these days we're going to forever be with the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm glad there is some provision of comfort even today while we're living. You know, there is comfort when you mourn. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 4, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now, to mourn means to express grief or sorrow. It means to grieve. It means to be sorrowful. And so mourning may be expressed by weeping or audible sounds, or it may be expressed by sobs or sighs or inward silent grief. Whatever the case may be, I am glad that we have been promised as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and as a receiver of the Spirit of God into our heart, that when you and I are mourning, we can receive comfort from the Lord. And so there's comfort when you mourn. There is comfort when you are cast down. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, and verse number 5, the Bible says, For when we were come into Macedonia, of course, Paul here doing the writing, our flesh had no rest. But we were troubled on every side, without were fightings, within were fears. And so Paul here is relaying to these Corinthians people just a little bit of his heart concerning the things that he has had to suffer or endure by trying to get the gospel to them. And verse number six says, Nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down. Listen, here it is. Paul had prayed. He had fasted. He had suffered. He had waited to hear from them. And his affection or affliction for them is extremely evident as he was willing to do whatever was necessary to help that church get right with God. In verse number six, he said, nevertheless, God. Paul understood and Paul gave credit to God for all things. Paul didn't find comfort in Facebook. Paul didn't find comfort in Instagram, as many do in our day. Paul didn't find comfort in any other social media uh, outreach or network. No, Paul found whatever he needed in God. Listen, friend, if you would understand and realize that all 
all of our comfort comes from God. It matters not the instrument through which you and I receive the comfort that God gives us. The comfort itself comes from the Lord. And so he said, nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down. Listen, if you're cast down, if you're abused, either either physically or mentally or persecuted, if you're anxious or depressed, Jesus wants to comfort you. It is his desire, friend, to bring you comfort. It doesn't matter how long you've been saved. It doesn't matter how spiritual you think you might be. There are times in our life when we need comfort that only God can give. Listen, you've forgotten who's writing this passage of scripture that we're reading, the great apostle Paul. As far as I'm concerned, the greatest Christian that ever lived, the greatest missionary that ever lived, the greatest preacher other than the Lord Jesus Christ that ever lived, the human author of the majority of the New Testament, friend. And if he, if he got discouraged, if he got depressed, if he was cast down, you better believe, friend, that you and I are going to go through some things in this life that calls us to be cast down. I'm glad that our great God has promised comfort to those that mourn and comfort to those who are cast down. Now, we see that he, we see here that the provision of comfort, we see the promise of comfort, the provision of comfort, and then, friend, we see now, let me let me get one more thing. We we're comforted in our mourning. We're comforted when we're cast down, and we're comforted when we suffer tribulation. In Second Corinthians chapter one, verse number three, the Bible says, "Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies." Listen to this, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation. Now, here's what I want you to notice about this. It's important to note that we are comforted in our tribulation. We're not, there's not escape from our tribulation. We are comforted in our tribulation. And so I'm thankful that God has a, a, allowed us to understand from the scripture that there is comfort in tribulation. You know, the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You know, oftentimes we want to avoid tribulation or persecution. So, so what we do is we shy away from the work of God and the will of God and the way of God so that we won't be persecuted. Listen, friend, we're, we're promised comfort in tribulation. So we see the promise of the comforter. We see the prison provision of the comforter. Now we see the purpose of comfort. I began reading in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 just a moment ago. I'll read there again, verse number 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in our, all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Well, that was a mouthful in those couple of verses. So we see here that we're comforted in our tribulation and the reason that we're comforted in our tribulation, the purpose of our comfort is that we might comfort someone else in their trouble. Now, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that we try to explain to the person going through the tribulation or the trouble uh, that they're in, uh, that that our trouble was much worse than their situation is. Listen, there there isn't any comfort in in that for them whatsoever. There isn't any comfort to them in our complaining. Now listen carefully. Neither is it any comfort to them if we're boasting that our situation is worse than theirs. Amen. No, we comfort them by reminding them of how good God has been to us in spite of our trouble, in spite of our tribulation, in spite of our persecution, in spite of the fact that we're cast down. I am glad that the Lord Jesus Christ comforted us and we should comfort someone else. Could you imagine, could you imagine if we came to the Lord Jesus Christ for comfort and he said, really, you're coming to me for comfort? What, what about me? Uh, if you think you need comfort? And what about me? I was hanging on the cross for you, amen. No, he doesn't say that. He just gives us comfort. Could you imagine as a child coming to your mom and you, you had a, a broken heart, you had, a, you had a, a need, a concern, and you come to your mom to seek comfort and she said, huh, 
You think you need comfort. What about me? You wasn't there to comfort me when I was giving birth to you. No, no, we're, we're not to compare horror stories. We're not to be boasting that our situation is worse. We're not to be comparing our situations. No, no, friend. We simply, we simply comfort them by encouraging them that regardless of what they're going through, God is enough and His comfort is enough. Amen? And so we see the, we see the, uh, the promise of comfort. We see the provision of comfort. We see the purpose of comfort. Now, how about the paths of comfort? Well, I'm, uh, speaking about the paths of comfort, who, Or what does God use to comfort us? Well, as far as the who goes, the Father comforts us. We're still in that first, that passage of scripture in in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. I'm glad that the Father comforts us, aren't you? What a blessing. How about the Lord comforts us? In, in Psalm 86, let me, let me turn it right fast. In Psalm 86, the Bible says in verse 15, But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, plenteous in mercy and truth. I'll have to move on while I'll be preaching from that passage. Verse 16 says, O turn unto me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant and save the son of thine handmaid. Verse 17, show me a token for good that they which hate me may see it and be ashamed because thou, Lord, has hopen. We don't say that word anymore. It just means help. But thou, O Lord, has hopen me and comforted me. And so we see from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 3, that the Father comforts us. We see from Psalm 86, verse 17, that the Lord comforts us. In John chapter 14, verse number 6, we see that the Spirit comforts us. The Bible says there, and I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another comforter, that He may abide with you forever. Acts chapter 9, verse 31 says, Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. And so the Father comforts us, the Lord comforts us, the Spirit comforts us. What a blessing, friend. I'm glad that God has us covered with comfort. Now, so we talk about those, the Godhead comforting us. Do you know that your children can comfort you? If you're blessed, you're privileged to have children. Did you know that your children can comfort you? I got it right from the Bible. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, verse 17, it says, correct thy son, he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Now, if you remember a few sermons ago, we were talking about that rod and staff, and I said that there is no comfort without correction. I hope that's something that sticks in your mind and you never forget. There is no comfort without correction. I think it was Brother James, Brother James Knox that said this. He said, the kid will love you now if you let them have their way, if you let them do their own thing, and if you let them make their own rules, but they will hate you later. He says, or you can be a proper biblical parent now, and they may not like you very much, but they will love you when you get older. And so, friend, I, the, the Bible says here that if you correct your son, he'll give you rest. That sounds like comfort to me. If you, if you correct your son, he will, he will delight, he will bring a delight unto your soul. That, that sounds like comfort to me, amen. I promise it will be better for them and for you. I'd much rather have rest than delight, amen. That seems way more comforting than, than the grief and the heartache and, and the, the uh, desire of some kids who are 30 and 40 years old and still depending on mom and dad to keep them up, amen. You ought to instruct them right. You ought to correct them right, amen. And so your children can bring you uh, comfort. I seen this meme one time. It says, if you, if you raise your children, you get to spoil your grandchildren. If you spoil your children, you will have to raise your grandchildren. Amen. Let me say that again. I want to say that again. If you raise your children, you get to spoil your grandchildren. If you spoil your children, you'll get to raise your grandchildren. And so God expects us to correct our children and they can in turn be a comfort to us. Now, here's another thing. Faith in the Lord can give us comfort. 
Now, in Matthew chapter 9, there was a story of a woman who had an issue of blood. And uh, you know the story. She she pressed her way through the cloud, a crowd and touched the hem of his garment. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 22, But Jesus turned about him, and when he saw her, he said, Boy, I like this, Daughter, now look, be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Now, ain't that a blessing? He, you know what he said? Thy faith hath made thee whole. Be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Now, let me ask you something. What do you have the most of? Faith or fear? There, there's a lot of people, man, they, they, are, they are scared to death. They're, they're afraid to leave their home. They're, they're afraid to do anything. I, but I'm, this, this woman was willing to get out in the crowd in spite of her infirmity, make her way to Jesus, press through the thong just to touch the hem of his garment, and her faith made her whole. Her faith brought her comfort. Listen, there's no comfort in fear. And if you're listening to the sound of my voice today and your faith is weak and fear is rampant in your life, faith cometh by the hearing of the word of God. Do you know the saints of God can comfort us? In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse number 5, Paul said, For when we were come to into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. Nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not by the coming, not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. So Paul was comforted by the coming of Titus. So we see that, the, the, and Paul was, not only was Paul comforted by the coming of Titus, Paul and Titus are comforted by the Corinthian believers. Now, they, they were comforted because of their desire to be obedient to the first epistle of Corinthians, and they got things right with the Lord. And of course, Paul is comforted by the coming of Titus. If you remember uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 2, uh, the, the Bible t- teaches 2 Corinthians chapter 2 that, that Paul was, was burdensome. He was troubled because Titus was not there. Now, it's not that Titus did anything wrong. He may, it was hindered from getting there, whatever the case may have been. But he was troubled because Titus was not there. And he is comforted when he is reunited again with Titus. Listen, friend, you ought to be in your place. You have no idea what a great importance it is. He said in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, just let me read that. Chapter 2 and verse number 12, he says, Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel and a door was opened unto me, open unto me of the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit. There was no comfort because I found not Titus my brethren. Listen, you have no idea how important it is for you to be where you're supposed to be. Never underestimate the importance of being in your spot. Never underestimate the importance of being in your place. It is an encouragement to the pastor. It is an encouragement to other believers that you are faithful to be where you're supposed to be. It is a comfort to them. Amen. And so there was the, the, the comfort by Titus coming and the comfort by the other believers getting things right with God. Now, there's a third thing too. As believers, we are to comfort one another. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Wherefore, comfort yourself together and edify one another, even as ye also do. Now, listen, as this old world that we live in continues to get worse and worse, we're going to need each other more and more. And so we need to be busy comforting and edifying and encouraging and then strengthening one another. Now, here's the last thing. I'm out of time. This is the last point. We'll move on to a next verse on the next broadcast. The scriptures can comfort us. Psalm 119 and verse number 50 says, This is my comfort and my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. The proud have had me greatly in derision, yet have I not declined from thy law. I remembered thy judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted my Sell. Listen, stop whining, stop belly aching, stop blaming everyone else, stop being having the poochy lip because no one's calling.
called, because no one's noticed, because no one's reached out. And get in this blessed old book, the Bible, amen, and get you some comfort for the Word of God. And then you call those people that you think should have called you. You reach out to those people that you think should have reached out to you, amen. And so, you see, th this thing goes both ways. The Scriptures can comfort you, and you can find comfort in the Word of the Lord. The Bible says in Romans 15, verse number 4, Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience, listen, and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. There is comfort and there is hope available in the Scriptures. Thank God for the comfort that dwells in my heart in the form of the Spirit of God. What a blessing to know Jesus Christ. What a blessing to be saved. Our time is quickly come and gone. Hope you'll tune in again next week. Same place, same time. May God bless you until the end is our prayer. Thank you so much for watching and listening on social media. That's a tremendous blessing to us. I do wish you would like and share the broadcast. It sure will help us to reach more people. May God bless you till we meet again is our prayer.